this is the Nightwolf howling at you and today we're going to be taking a look at the dancing box. Uh, no, we're going to be taking a look at the G.I. Joe Retro Series Classified Storm Shadow from Cobra the Enemy. Part of their retro line of figures. This one is designed in packaging that goes along with the old school 80s O-ring figures. Brand new artwork, however, to match the modified equipment. On the back, we see some of the other figures in, I guess, the wave, even though the waves have been kind of sporadic and weird because Gung Ho and Destro came with Lady J and the Baroness. And, uh, De uh, Destro. And I think Storm Shadow and Zartan originally came with Snake Eyes. Storm Shadow, Row. Covert Ops, Primary Specialty, Assassin, Secondary Specialty, Intelligence, Birthplace, Classified. Storm Shadow can trace his family history through 30 generations of assassins. He can scale sheer walls with bare hands and feet and move with blinding speed. However, that's not all we have to talk about with this guy, because I do have one of the old file cards from one of the reissue lines. Which is kind of funny because this one actually is um, when he was part of the G.I. Joe team, even though he's still in a Cobra uniform. Ninja, codename Storm Shadow. Uh, they've got his social security number and file name, Aragakashi, Arashakagi. Fuck. Ninja, codename Storm Shadow. SN, not gonna read it. File name, Arashikagi Thomas S. Primary military specialty, covert operations. Secondary military specialty, martial arts instructor. Birthplace, St. Louis, Missouri. Why, how? I know, I, I've seen parts of the comics where uh, they refer to him as Tommy. And I think this was before Cobra and G.I. Joe when they did a flashback. As I've I've kind of flitted around the comics every so often. I haven't actually totally gone through and read them yet, though. Storm Shadow comes from the same long-range recon patrol outfit as Stalker and Snake Eyes. He also comes from a family of ninja who he rejoined after serving his time in Southeast Asia. The head of the ninja clan, the Hardmaster, Storm Shadow's uncle, was destroyed. The perpetrator was believed to be Storm Shadow himself. Storm Shadow knew otherwise and took off in pursuit of assailants. This eventually led him to the terrorist organization known as Cobra. Storm Shadow infiltrated the organization, serving as Cobra Commander's personal bodyguard until he could discover the truth surrounding his uncle's death. It was ultimately revealed that the assassin was Zartan, on orders from Cobra Commander, and the intended target was Snake Eyes. Storm Shadow was ultimately denied his revenge, but also realized that his drive for revenge had nearly consumed his soul. He turned his back on the evil that had nearly claimed him. He sought out his ninja brother Snake Eyes and eventually joined the G.I. Joes. From General Hawk's Files In his own way, Storm Shadow is just devastating a warrior as Snake Eyes. However, Storm Shadow seems to prefer the more traditional, even ancient methods of combat using the tools of the ninja as opposed to modern hardware. Storm Shadow places a very high regard on personal honor and is determined to make up for his time in the service of Cobra. I'm glad he's on our side now. So let's open this sucker up. You know, it kind of, well,
So it kind of sounds like his background from at least the old uh, reissue card is kind of what they based Snake Eyes on from the G.I. Joe Origins Snake Eyes movie, which if you haven't watched it, you're one of the lucky ones. Anyway, Storm Shadow here. Let's uh, take a look at his articulation. Again, we know what Storm Shadow kind of looks like from the comics. Even if you don't want to use like the movie style head, which definitely I would prefer not to. It would have been nice if they had given us an unmasked head for him to go along with it. But they didn't. So his articulation on the neck is the usual chicken neck. Although he does have this um, representation of a hood being down, which not really necessary on this figure since they didn't give him the hood up. But he can look down, up. Off to the side, chicken neck again, spin around the head and cause the uh, hood to move around. Ah, you can even put it down this way if you want. To be honest, I think that almost looks better than the other way. At least from the front, from the back it looks stupid. He's got the butterfly joint here. And we can move his arm up and down and up and down. And we can spin it around. The way the joint here... Uh, for the butterfly joint, since they simulated the cloth being kind of cut on the side, does, however, hinder the movement around. So you actually have to pull the arm out to do it. He's got the bicep cut. Double jointed elbow. And the plastic on the elbow itself is a different color than the rest of it. Probably a harder plastic as well. <laughs> He's actually got a forearm spin in this case mostly because it looks like the um, wraps on his arm are a separate piece. So that gives us a forearm spin. We also got the hand spin. And we have the up and down articulation for the wrist on these ones. That is kind of a unique, uh, unique bit though. Kind of makes me wonder how many of these figures, um, how many of these figures have uh, forearms like that. Also, he's got the belt here that is supposed to simulate the bottom of his gi top. Um, I'm not really sure. I guess the proper position of it based on the artwork is, yeah, I guess it's supposed to be towards the back, which seems kind of weird to me because, you know, that's not really normal for these kind of belts. He's got a little harness here on the side that holds a couple of ninja throwing stars that do not come off. However, he does come, a hand, come with a hand holding a ninja star so you can make it look like you're getting ready to throw one, but he doesn't have any loose ones, probably because they would be a choking hazard. Mostly decently painted, although you can see the flesh tone on the bottom of it. And he does come with a Cobra embossed figure stand. And his toes kind of curl up on this figure, which seems a little bit weird to me. But what do I know? I don't know if there's a particular reason for that or not. Ah, there we go. Wait, wait, uh, I already showed you the star with the hand. I already showed you the hand with the star in it. And it comes with a fist for the other side, so you can throw on one and punch with the other. His equipment is designed much like the old uh, retro figures design, where we have the backpack that holds his two swords. Uh, katana and a, a tato? Tanto? He's got his two swords here. Uh, one is longer than the other, as they did with the G.I. Joe figures back in the 80s for him. Though he does have on his blades a snake design to it on the handle.
And of course, he's got his compound bow, which attaches to the back like that. And our extra arrow, which can fit in a little slot in the backpack as well. You know, what he doesn't have is a pair of dumb chucks, and I've got the swords on backwards. Or upside down. Crap. <laughs> I do believe the original figure from the 80s did have a set of nunchucks. And the backpack can, of course, fit on his back here. And this is actually the same equipment that comes with uh, Vipra. Comparison-wise, I do have the Storm Shadow figure that came with that file card I read earlier. Obviously, this one was a reissue for one of their uh, anniversary ones. He does have an extra, this version has an extra knife in his belt and a star. Maybe you can see it there, but not on the actual thing going across his chest, which I guess technically is supposed to be holding his uh, equipment back. If you look at the back, the, <laughs> the one for classified is actually the exact opposite of the one for the old vintage one. And I am going to straight out say that this bow does not like to stay in place. And it is basically just a, the old figure came with a short bow, basically. But I remember reading somewhere around um, about the right-handed right, right -handed and being left-handed in Japan in the olden days. And maybe that's why they switched this over to this side instead of this side, because you wouldn't be able to draw your sword with your right hand that way. Although realistically, if you're using both blades at once, you should probably have them actually going on opposite directions. Like Leonardo from Ninja Turtles. And of course, he can hold both of his uh, sword blades like so. We can swap out his hand for his throwing star hand. Throwing star hand. Sha, sha. I don't know if that's right. Sound effect for that. But we can also have him hold his bow in his gripping hand. For gripping hands. And like with all of these figures that have the ability to do archery, can we actually position everything properly for shooting a bow? Although I think technically I did do that when I was doing the... Although, I guess with this in this case, though, you can't really... Since... This isn't really designed very well for him to be pulling it back. And if you try to pull pull it all back. Okay, so if you've never used a compound bow, you pull this string back by itself. And the whole point of a compound bow is you pull it back and you can hold it in position for a long time without tying your hands once it's pulled back far enough. But, so if you try to do something goofy like this, it doesn't look right. And... Unlike, say, the Shadow Tracker figure that actually did have a... Wait, did Shadow Tracker have a... You know what? I don't remember. There's some figure I did recently that actually had a string on the bow, and I don't remember what figure it was. Oh, that was Willa from Thundercats. 
So yeah, basically none of these figures are designed to look like they're pulling the bow back. So it would be kind of nice if they had included a second bow with it pulled back, especially if you're gonna have the arrow. Cause at best all you can do now is kind of make it look like you're getting ready to uh, knock the arrow to, to shoot it. So anyway, overall the retro card back figure looks pretty nice. Uh, I know there are very few differences between it and the classified standard figure. The main one being that there are some color differences. Uh, I believe his hands are actually gloves in that version. So they're all white and he comes with a second hood part that fully works as a hood over his head to make him look more like the uh, Storm Shadow that was part of the Joes in the 80s. And not this version that was part of the Joes in the 90s. I think that was the 90s. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at our Storm Shadow here. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace and love. Just trying to give you a brief close-up on the face sculpt here. Uh, he does actually have a scar around his eye. It's really hard to pick up with the camera. And I'll try to get a good photo of it too. But it was something that I noticed and wanted to partake. And it's only on the one side. Which makes sense.